Hi, my name is Ziho Li, and I'm a reconstructive urologist at Northwestern Medicine. Complex urostricture disease generally occurs after some kind of injury, whether that be trauma, infection, inflammation, radiation, or iatrogenic causes. The simplest way to repair a ural stricture is by excision and primary anastomosis. This involves excising the disease segment of ureter and anastomosing the healthy segments of ureter back together. However, for patients with complex ureteral strictures, or those strictures that are too long, or those with significant periureteral fibrosis, we need to perform adjunctive maneuvers in order to facilitate attention-free anastomosis. In general, we'll progress from the most simplest techniques and gradually progress to more complex and advanced techniques only when absolutely necessary. In patients that can't be repaired by excision and primary anastomosis, we can bring the bladder up or bring the kidney down to help facilitate attention-free anastomosis. Additionally, we can create a uh, tubularized flap of bladder or renal pelvis to also help with achieving attention-free anastomosis. In the most complex scenarios, we can also use substitution techniques um, where we use non-urinary tissues to assist with ureteral reconstruction. I've been very fortunate to help pioneer some techniques that utilize buccal mucosa graft or the inner lining of your cheek and also the appendix to assist with complex ureteral stricture disease reconstruction. For patients with extremely long segment ureteral strictures, we can replace the ureter with a segment of ileum or also perform an autotransplantation to help bridge the gap. Reconstruction of complex ureteral stricture disease has traditionally been very difficult. And the reason for this is because in the past, we generally used bowel to assist with ureteral reconstruction. This was suboptimal because reconstruction of the urinary system utilizing bowel is um, extremely morbid because it requires an excision and anastomosis of a bowel segment. Um, we set out to find a substitution tissue that could decrease the morbidity associated with ureteral reconstruction. Buccal mucosa graft is an ideal substitute for urinary tract reconstruction because um, it's always in a wet environment, it's hairless, and it also has antimicrobial uh, properties as well. And what we found is that the outcomes of buccal mucosa graft ureteroplasty are very promising. In a multi-institutional study evaluating the intermediate term efficacy and safety associated with buccal mucosa graft ureteroplasty, we uh, found that in a subset of 54 patients with the most complex types of ureteral stricture disease, we um, at a median follow-up of approximately 27 months, we noted a success rate of 87%. When we utilize buccal mucosa graft for ureteral reconstruction, there are two major techniques that we can utilize. In the first technique, what we can do is we can, instead of actually excising the ureter itself, what we do is we make a longitudinal incision on the anterior surface of the ureter. After doing so, what we'll do is we'll onlay a patch of buccal mucosa graft on to fill the defect. This technique is particularly useful because we're not transecting the ureter and therefore we're not um, transecting the longitudinal blood supply of the ureter itself. By simply lo uh, longitudinally incising the ureter, we're preserving um, the longitudinal blood supply and we're just performing an onlay type repair. In the other type of uh, repair utilizing buccal mucosa graft, we call this an augmented anastomotic type repair. This type of surgery uh, is what we'll utilize in patients with um, obliterated ureteral lumens. We'll actually excise the disease segment of ureter, and after doing so, we'll anastomose the back wall of the ureter back together. After doing so, what we'll do is we'll onlay another uh, piece of buccal mucosa graft to reconstruct the ureter.